Hello, this is Stephen Yang from We Learn to Share. Today, I'll be teaching you about IGCS geography, topic 1.2, migration. So let's get right on to it. And this is the syllabus information. So Cambridge International suggests that candidates should be able to explain and give reasons for population migration, demonstrate an understanding of the impact of migration, and I'll also delve into the aspects of internal movements, such as rural urban migration, as well as international migrations, both voluntary and involuntary, and the positive and negative impacts on the destination and the origin of migrants and on the migrants themselves. And of course, you need to know a case study about an international migration. These are the important key terms that you need to know. Migration is moving from one place to another, Internal migration is migration within a country. International migration is migration across international borders to settle in another country. Forced migration is a migration due to coercive factors such as war and natural disasters. The origin is the location where migrants move from, and the destination is the location where the migrants move to. So migrants move from the origin to the destination. A push factor is a factor that influences people to leave a certain place, and the pull factor is what attracts people to a certain place. Voluntary migration is migration as a decision of people and individuals, and remittance is the funds transferred from migrants to their home country. So why do people migrate? To first talk about the reasons of internal and international migration, the push factors are the lack of jobs available and the low quality of education, and the pull factors are diverse types of industry, which can provide more diverse jobs, specialized medical facilities too, and also more entertainment like theaters, museums, and galleries. For forced migration, there are only push factors because people have to migrate, so if they don't migrate, they it will be very dangerous. So the push factors will be war, uh, social insecurities, and diseases like famine caused by drought and poverty. Now, these are the impacts of migration. The impacts can be categorized to the origin or to the destination. And this is important because the questions tend to separate the impact of the origin and to the destination. So you need to really categorize them when you actually study this topic. So for the internal migration, internal and international migration, the positive impact to the origin is uh, remittance since it may contribute to the economy and individual households too. The negative impact can be uh, depopulation, which can lead to losing the chance to be developed. And in the worst scenario, it even can be deserted. Also, the dependency ratio will increase and there will be less workforce as the economically active population is likely to migrate out of uh, the location. And there will be a lack of basic health care since a uh, less number of doctors per population will be there because uh, most doctors tend to move to cities to actually uh, gain more profit for themselves. And for the destination, the positive impact will be the increase in workforce and consumers, which will lead to economic development and the flourishing of businesses. And the negative impacts will be uh, overpopulation, the exact opposite of depopulation, as I mentioned before. So the quality of life will decrease. And this also relates to the increasing crisis in Hong Kong, uh, because in Hong Kong, the amount of land is small, but there's an increased amount of population actually trying to go, go into Hong Kong and live there. So to actually accommodate as much people as possible, the housing prices are inevitably very high for a small piece of land. And for forced migration, the impact to the origin will only be negative since, let's say, if a country is at war, then the economy will be crippled and it's definitely unsafe for people to keep living there. So the population pyramid, which I will discuss about in the next topic, will be dispro disproportionate, but I'll just clarify it in verbal terms. So this means that the balance in gender and age group will break. So a population needs to be stable and steady in gender and age groups, but this will be uh, broken. 
with impacts to the destination, the good thing is that people will not be in danger, of course, but there, there can be conflict between refugees and locals due to cultural and religious differences and more competition. And the lack of education will definitely make it hard for refugees to find new jobs in the new homes. So now I introduce you to a case study. And this is about an international migration from Mexico to the USA. And to give a general overview, since 2,850 thousand Mexicans have entered the USA each year and a total of 12 million Mexicans are residing there. And to first talk about the push factors, um, it's poverty, that the minimum wage is less than a dollar per hour. And also, this is a serious issue, but 40% of Mexico population is in poverty, two out of five people. This is a significantly high percentage. And that's why the pull factors such as uh, the minimum wage, the average minimum wage of the United States is $7.25, so $7.25 uh, per hour, which is about seven to eight times of Mexico's right now. And the fact that 57% of Mexican migrants enjoy a better life in the USA due to better social security, housing, and education will definitely attract Mexicans to actually move to the USA. And the positive impact to Mexico is uh, definitely remittance because that is the second largest source of foreign currency coming to there. So it is therefore a large contributor to Mexico's economy. So if there was no remittance, then Mexico's economy is most likely to shrink. And the negative impact will be family desertion because uh, let's say when people migrate illegally, then they can't return to their home country easily. And also there are smugglers who are paid people who support the migration of Mexicans across the border illegally, not legal, illegally to increase the rate of crime. So these people uh, tend to support Mexicans, but this is actually definitely illegal. They are paid tens of thousands of dollars for this illegal act, but Mexicans really want to move to the USA. So actually they tend to choose this uh, approach, which is not, a legal one. And also, definitely that would increase the rate of crime. And of course, when a country has a high crime rate, then uh, it definitely is a negative impact to it. And for the impact to the definition destination is that the USA will be having more cheap labor. The country is like now lacking low skilled laborers with low income, so Mexican immigrants can actually help the economy expand by giving more profits to companies because even though they are cheap labor, like the minimum wage is like seven to eight times of Mexico, so at least they will get get out of poverty. And the negative impact is that the illegal immigrants actually do not pay tax and also they could actually steal jobs from Americans. And this is the example of seven mark case study question about international migration. So I would like you to pause the video and use my case study and the ideas you've learned and also the background knowledge. Uh, try making three developed points. And these are the points that I made. The first point is family desertion. So about 4.9 million Mexican immigrants are illegal that like these 4.9 million people actually cannot guarantee a safe return back to Mexico. This is actually tragic because family is very important. And if they cannot meet their family forever, then this is a tragedy. This is very depressing for them. So this is definitely a negative impact. And my second point is the presence of smugglers. So they actually influence uh, immigrants to illegally cross the borders after paying them like tens of thousands of dollars, as I said before, while well, migrating. But there are some smugglers that actually scam them. So let's say you're a Mexican migrant and you pay tens of thousands of dollars of them and they suddenly just run away and escape and they just don't help you. They don't support you. That is definitely a scam. And my third point will be the clash between conservative Americans and immigrants. So 
Uh, some conservative Americans are very uh, against immigrants in general. So if Mexicans actually reside in those neighborhoods, in those neighborhoods where a lot of conservative Americans live, not to be offensive, but there then there will be a likely clash between neighbors. And yeah, this is it for my lecture today. And in my next video, I'll be talking about topic 1.3, population structure. And I hope you find this lecture useful. And please don't forget to press like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.